Give God praise. Come on, come on, come on. That's just a time to worship God. How many really truly love the Lord on today? We come to praise and magnify his name. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. There has been a whole bunch of stuff that's going on, but I'm glad that I'm still yet here. Amen. Amen. How many is glad to be here? In the midst of whatever that you're going through, God, I'm glad that I'm here. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to wake up for me. We didn't just get here by ourselves, God. But God allowed us to see another day. He allowed us to be here just one more time. Amen. So we shall rejoice and be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We, we take that for granted. But I, every time I wake up, I tell God, thank you. Because it could have been another way. But I say, God, I thank you for the little pain that I may have. I thank you for the little things that might be going on. But God, I'm glad that I woke up. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I didn't come to pump and prime you. You should already have done that when you walked in here. Amen. Amen. Because I feel good, good, good down in my soul. Amen. Amen. We're going to go into a word of prayer and then we're going to go forth. Amen. If I can have everyone stand, everyone that can and will stand. Amen. We're going to go into the thorn of grace. Amen. Amen. I believe that God has a word for his people on today. Amen. But we just have to have ears to be able to hear his word. Amen. Father God, we thank you. God, we love you. God, we appreciate you. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. God, we thank you for the activities of our limbs. God, we thank you for our right mind, God. God, we thank you for allowing us to come on the streets, the boulevards, and the avenues, God, that with no close cars and no accidents, God. God, we thank you for allowing us to come here safely to come and praise and magnify your name, God. Because, God, you've been so good to us. God, you've been so mighty to us, God. God, you've been so merciful to us, God. And, God, we just come to tell you, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your outstretched hands all night long, God. We thank you for the muggers not mugging us, God. We thank you for the intruders not coming into our homes, God. God, we thank you for our children still being here, God. We thank you for our family being here, God. God, we need you. Yeah. God, we need you in this place, God. We need you to saturate this place, God, like never before, God. God, we let, let those that need you, let them know that you're there, right there, that need you right there, that you're there by their sides, God. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, have your way. Now, God, have your way. Have your way in this place, God. In every song, God. In every scripture, God. In every praise, pray, God. Let your name be glorified on today. For this is the day that you have made, God. And God, we come to magnify your name. We come to glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Come on and give God the biggest praise in this place. Come on, that was good for me. We're talking about the kings of kings. We're talking about the lords of lords. Come on, come on. Let's usher the Lord in this place. We're going to have the praise and worship team come. Let's say amen as they come.
more. God, we love you more. We love you more. Come on, if you would just lift your both hands to the Lord and just tell the Lord, I love you. Come on, let it come from your lips, let it come from your heart. Come from your mind, come from your soul with all your very being. God, we love you. Love you and we thank you for your sacrifice. Your never-ending love. Your, your never-ending love. It has kept us to this point in our lives. And it's cloaked in grace and your mercy and your love. We need your love. We need your love. We need your love. We need your love. from where you are I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to show love one to another because the Bible says this that that there's no greater love that than this that a man will lay down his life for a friend and there are those of us in here who have have called on the name of the Lord whereby we are saved and God calls us friend he calls us friend because his love hung on the cross for us and he stayed there just for us and for this cause for this reason we shall love the Lord our God with all of our heart mind and our soul second greatest commandment is like this to love your neighbor as you love yourself so many times we come into the house of God and we don't have fellowship one with another but the act of true worship is this of us coming together and agreeing about who God is in one place so just for a moment, I want you to move from where you are and meet somebody and talk to somebody and just tell them how good God is. This is, this is a part of worship. Come on. You be that part of worship that offered yourself, offered your testimony as a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. More and more. Love you more and more, yeah. more and more. From heart to heart, from faith to faith, we love more. More and more. We're known by the love we have for one another. More and more. And the world will know it's because we love more and more. more and we love our enemies. We love our brothers and sisters. More and more. No greater love, no greater love, no greater love than this. More and more. No greater love, no greater love than this, this right here. More and more. I love you, you love me. I need you more and more.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
love of God overflow, permeates all my soul. Love of God overflow, permeates all my soul. room today. He is here. Whatever you need from him, he is here in this room. God, we invite you to fill us up until we overflow. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over.
Till I overflow, I want to run over, over, fill me up. Till I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over. This is your time. How many want God to really fill you up? The altar is open. If you really want God to fill you up, I need you to run down this altar now. If you really want God to start changing things in your life now, I need you to come to this altar now. Till I am over, over, fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over, over. I just need you to stretch your hands. I don't need to tell you what you need to tell God. You know what you're dealing with. You know your situation. I need you to talk to God. This is your time. This is your hour. You ask God what you need. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Fill them up, God. Fill them up, Lord. Fill them up, Lord. Yeah. Fill them up, Lord. And fill them until they overflow, God. God, you do it in their lives. Saturate their lives now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I need you to cry out to God like it was your last time. Come on, come on. I need you to get out of your comfort zone. I need you to cry out, God, and say, God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I can't do this by myself. I'm tired of doing it by myself. God, I need you now. God, I need you now. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, God. God, we love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a yes in this place. There's a yes in this place. God began to tell God yes. Come on, begin to tell God yes. Yes is your first step. Begin to tell God yes. Yes, I surrender. Yes, I will do your will. Yes, I understand what you need me to do. Yes, I will go. It's yes. Thank you, Jesus. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. 
I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. There's a sweet anointing in this place. God is still moving in this place. Your breakthrough is coming. There's a breakthrough that's coming in this place. And God said, your breakthrough is now. But you got to really want it. You got to really surrender and says, God, I give it all. I give it all to you. How many really want to give God it all? Regardless of what the situation might look like, God, I'm going to give it to you all. I'm not going to tuck it in my pocket. I'm not going to put it in my back burner. But God, I'm going to throw it out and say, God, it's yours. We thank God for his spirit being in this place. Come on, let's just give God and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we are glad to be here on this morning, amen. There's a, such a sweet anointing that's in this place, amen. Amen. If you haven't felt welcome now, I want to welcome you to the Gospel Center Church of God in Christ, amen where their love abides in this place amen amen do we have any first time visitors if we have any first time visitors at least if you can raise your hand and wave to us amen amen come on gospel center let's love on them amen amen we thank god for you being here on this morning amen there should be some people coming in here to come in and say hi thank you for coming they're moving now they're moving now Amen. We thank you for coming. We hope that this won't be your last time. Amen. Amen. How many feel good? Amen. Amen. That was good for me. How many really feel good down in your soul? Amen. Amen. We thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Cortland Younger, and his wife, Melissa Younger, amen. We want to say thank you for coming to Gospel Center, and we hope that this is not your last time. Amen? Amen. 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 we coming into the best part of service. Amen. Amen. And that is offering time. Somebody say offering time. Amen. Amen. And there are ways that you can pay and it is on our screen right here we have our text um, option we have our paypal we have our giveify and then we also have um, our drop box that are in the back if you want a offering um, envelope please raise your hand and our off and our um, ushers will come and assist you amen amen isn't it good to be able to give amen amen we thank god for the giver, amen. We thank God for each one of you being here, amen. And do we have any announcements? No announcements? Amen. We're just glad to be here, amen. Amen. And we're going to go into the word of God, amen, on this morning. Oh, thank you. We're going to have the choir sing, y'all, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for the choir. I'm glad I read. Really, I'm glad I read. Really
singing, oh, precious is that flow, it was the blood. Thank you for the blood of your son who came to redeem us and wash us. There is no other like him in all the earth. God, we sit in your presence, complete, complete with joy, ever flowing. God, we thank you for your unfailing love towards us. God, we pray that even now the word will find us where we are. That it will come to build us up in the name of Jesus. God, satisfy your will tonight. Satisfy your will today. God, we glorify you. In all things, we give you praise. And we thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. God has been faithful to us. He's been good to us. Amen. Amen. The writer says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Amen. God is our dwelling place. Amen. He is our secret place. And in him we can hide. God, we thank you today. In your hearing, we're going to the word of the Lord. From the book of Matthew. If you would just stand to your feet with us. The book of Matthew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 16, starting from verse 13. Reading from the CSB version. Says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus responded, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples orders to tell no one that he was the Messiah. Amen. If you would, just echo these words to someone in your hearing I am the church. I am the church. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Man, good to see my brothers. 
Good to see my brothers. It's been a while. I had to put on my glasses and recognize who you were. We used to sing together. Back in the day. Back in the day. Good to see you all. To God be glory, honor, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. I was, I was just thinking, Sister Karoma, it's, it's a wonder how you can go back in time so quickly when you get to the age that I'm at right now. I lived a lot of days. I walked a few miles. And in fact, I've been around the world. And I, I, I. Okay, if you got that, y'all my age. But as I begin to reflect on just some of the places I've been to, I begin to reflect on the time I was in the military. And as I was in the military, I found myself in, in cultures I did not know of. I know I got a witness to my right. I didn't know the laws of the land. And before we got there, before we got to any port we were getting to, they would brief us on the laws of the land. In fact, I remember going to Singapore, and they told us, whatever you do, don't throw trash on the ground. You might find yourself in the middle of the quad, getting a rod to your back, just for throwing trash on the ground. I thank God for America, Land of the free, home of the brave. I know that some of us that in here, we, we throw in trash on the ground at some point in our lives. And we're so very grateful that we didn't get a rod to our backs. But everywhere I went, Brother Elijah, everywhere I went, I found myself under the laws, not of the country that I was in, but under the laws that governed me. Because everywhere I went, there was an American embassy there. And almost every country in the world, on this planet, there is an American embassy. And it's interesting, it's interesting thing about the embassy is that they're, they're sovereign yeah. territories, yeah. meaning they, they don't belong to the geographical country in which they are located. Rather, they belong to the countries from which they originated. For example, if you walk into the American embassy in France, you're no longer in France. You're in America. If you walk in Spain, or if you walk in Chile, if you walk in Japan, if you walk in Australia, Australia was a nice place, but if you walk there and you walk into an American embassy, you are no longer in Chile. You are no longer in Japan. You are no longer in Australia, you are in America. And when you are in that embassy, you are bound by and must operate by the laws of America rather than those countries. In other words, every time you walk into that embassy, you, you're walking into a little bit of America, which is your home, 
away from home. In the same way, the church is supposed to be a little bit like having a home away from home. It's to be the place where the laws and the values of eternity operate in our history. It's, it's where we, as the body of Christ, we represent what's going on, not here in this country. But we value the laws and we value the things that are from eternity into our past, into our history. And so it is that the church is not to live like the world. Because we operate on another and a higher level of authority. Church is to be a place where we the people can go to find truth. We the people can go to find acceptance. We the people can go and find equality. We the people can go and find freedom, safety, forgiveness, justice, and hope. Touch a neighbor say, I come to find hope. We as the church cannot fail to function in our primary reason for why we exist. We exist for a purpose. We exist for God's plan. We exist for a reason. And our primary reason that we exist must come from a kingdom perspective. Otherwise, the church will have Limited impact in our society today. Look at your neighbor and say, are you making impact? Yeah, somebody ought to know who you are. Somebody ought to know from where you come from. You ought to look like your daddy. You ought to talk like your daddy. You ought to represent your father that's in heaven. You ought to have some re resemblance of heaven. You understand, you understand God's kingdom is larger than the temporal and the political and the social realms of this world that we live in. Yeah, and it isn't confined to what we label even as Christians in this world. We, we cannot be defined by this world. Yeah, there, there's somebody in this world want to define who you are as a believer in Christ Jesus, but we already know who we are. You, you don't have to tell me who I belong to. You don't have to tell me my position in the earth because I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the, yeah, I don't have to go to you, Bank of America. I am the lender. And I'm not the borrower. I belong to God and he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. God's kingdom is both happening now and is to come. Touch your neighbor say God's kingdom is happening now. And it is to come. It's near to us, but yet so far away from us. God's kingdom operates by his rule, and it does not operate by man's rule. You might as well touch your neighbor and say, you might as well get your mind on things above. Yeah, that's, that's why we as believers, we, we, we have to have transformed minds. Transform minds to under th understand the things of God. To understand why God has commanded angels, hallelujah, to come to our aid. Why, why God has commanded that our bodies be healed just by a spoken word. We have to transform our minds to believe in a God that we know exists. Bible says we must know that he exists and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. 
God's kingdom operates by his rule. His ways are above our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts. He is the standard for our lives. The Bible says in Psalms 103 and 19, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules all over the world. We find a group in our text today. Right here in the text today, we find a group, a group who have been walking with Jesus close to three years now. We find a group of men whom the Lord had chose for himself, chose for himself to disciple them that they might learn about the kingdom of God. We find this group in a Gentile country with no crowds coming around them. No crowds around them asking Jesus to teach them. There were no crowds around them asking for Jesus to heal them. This was the opportunity for them to have some quiet reflection. Every now and then, you, you, you have to get somewhere to yourself. Get away from the busyness of the world's activities, of everyday life. You have to get away and have some quiet time to yourself to reflect about who you are and what your purpose is in the world. So it is that Jesus takes advantage. He takes advantage of a moment, just like I'm taking advantage of a moment right now. He takes advantage of a moment of the situation. And, and what does he do? He first, he first wants to clarify their thoughts about him. And then he wants to teach them some important truths. He wants them to teach him about his messiahship and being a disciple of Christ. So in this significant time in history, a time when it would be made clear to the disciples who Jesus was and what he meant in the term of his rejection, in terms of his death, burial, and his resurrection, Jesus takes out the time to find out. And he asks them, who do men say that I am? Many of us that are in here right now, we can go to our workspaces, we can go to places in the supermarket, and we can ask the same question, and we can hear the noise that's going on in the city, and some will even react and respond just like they did in this scripture right here. They asked, he asked the disciples a question about what people thought about him. Have you ever took out the time to really think about what people think about you? If I died right now, what would be on my obituary? How would people see me as I lived among them? Would they just say I was a good person? Would they say he owed me some money and I want it back right now? What would they say about you? Jesus as a question that seems to be, that seems to be very, very necessary. If you took a toll, a poll on what people thought about you, would they talk about your good works? Would they talk about how you loved God before them? Would they talk about how you responded? In times of trouble, trial, and tribulation, will they talk about you in a way that showed that you are a child of a 
king. Jesus asks the question. There is no indication here of why Jesus asked the question. We don't understand why he asked the question, but the question needed an answer. And he asked him, who do men say that the son of man is? This is the only time, Brother Jerry, that you will find Jesus proclaiming himself to be the Messiah. Because anytime you saw the son of man, big S, O-N, of man, it was to speak to the Messiah and his coming into the earth. So Jesus says, who do me? He gave them the answer to the test. He did not want them to be deceived about who he was. So he already stated it. Who do men say that the son of man is? And they were so comfortable in repeating back what everybody was saying in the community. The Bible says this. That it was clear, it was clear that Jesus is asking people who he is. They, they focus their answer on people who approved of Jesus. Just because people approve of Jesus doesn't mean that they follow Jesus. Just because people approve of Jesus doesn't mean that they walk with Jesus. Just because people approve of Jesus doesn't mean that they have the right perspective of who Jesus is. The Bible says this, that when Jesus asked the question, that they mentioned and affirmed every one of their answers. When they mentioned it, it affirmed that he was a prophet. He spoke good. Yeah, 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 I, I know who Jesus is. When we went out there, it was about 15,000 people. And he spoke with power. And it was good. And we had church. And we left the same way that we came. He spoke well. But we left the same way that we came. You understand in the Bible that prophets would speak on behalf of God and warn the people and, and tell the people that even even that Jesus was on his way. Get your life together. Get your life in order. And some heard the cry. And some said we had good church. And kept on going about their way. Some people thought Jesus, babe, some people thought Jesus was John the Baptist reincarnated. In fact, the Bible says that Herod thought Jesus was John the Baptist. And, and, and he thought that he was come back again. And, 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 and John the Baptist made such of an impression on Herod that he said, this man is powerful. This must be him. Had him shaking in his boots. But John the Baptist was dead. The Bible says he was beheaded. And wasn't coming back anymore. Some call him Elijah. And Elijah was one of the greatest prophets in Israel's history. And they saw Jesus as the fulfillment of the prophecy that Elijah would appear again. 
that Elijah would come again. And they, they, they literally thought Elijah was coming back to save them from all of their troubles. But nudge your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Elijah is dead. Some, some even brought in the prophet Jeremiah. Some of us might wonder, why Jeremiah? I understand Elijah. I, I understand John the Baptist. But Jeremiah was one of the latter prophets of the day, and he had a word from the Lord was heavy. It was gloom. It was doom. And Jesus sound a whole lot. Like Jeremiah. In fact, when the Bible says that Jesus wept, you kind of look like Jeremiah right now. That old weeping prophet. Look at your other neighbor and say, Jeremiah is dead. And, and, when, and when that wouldn't suffice, they said, Jesus was one of another, one of, one of the prophets. So in other words, they said, Jesus, you're, you're not on their level, but you, you're, you're just one of those other guys who are talking about the kingdom of heaven. And let me just group you in with all of those guys. By the time they get to where we are in our history today, all of the prophets, they dead. They in the grave. The Bible, the Bible makes it clear that Jesus wasn't just to be numbered among the prophets. But who who do you say that the Son of Man is? After they had satisfied Jesus' request to answer him about what the community thought, he then turned to them and asked them, Who do you say the Son of Man is some of us might just lower him to the level of just being a healer there were many that healed people and many that are healing people now and some of us might lower him to the level of just being a good man or the son of Joseph but he wasn't just the son of Joseph. He was the lamb that was slain. Was the bomb in Gilead. He was the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Hallelujah. He was the one that the prophet spoke of. Jesus decided to ask the ones who were closest to him. Who do you believe I am? And if I were to ask you the question today, who do you believe Jesus to be? I ought to hear that he is the son of God. I ought to hear that he died. That he rose again. And that he sits on the right hand of the father. And he came to save me from my sin and my shame. I ought to hear that he is the one that has satisfied, satisfied the payment for my sin. He is the one that I am still in awe of. He is the one that I don't take for granted. He is the savior of the world. He's the redeemer of man. He's the lover and the bishop of my soul. He is the Christ. 
He is the son of the living God. They had been with him for some time now. Because they've been with him for some time now, they ought to have known the answer. They seen what he did. They seen him turn water into wine. They seen him walk on water. They, they see him raise the dead. They see him establish himself in the earth. They see his works. You ought to nudge your neighbor right now and say, Does people, do, do people see your works? Do, do people see what you're doing? The Bible says this, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works. Not see you, but see the Father. Not, not, not see you get the pat on your back, say, they ought to see God. After you finish with your work, they ought not see everything that you've done, but they ought to see what God is doing through you. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify the Father that's in heaven. They had the right answer about who Jesus was because Peter... That, that great apostle Peter, whose name was Simon, y'all know what it meant. What would it mean? Sunday school was marching on. What would it mean? Man, he was a reed. And he would be tossed. He was on a ship, and you'd be tossed and to and fro from wherever the ship leads you. But Jesus said, Peter, you got the right answer. Because that answer didn't come through human wisdom. That answer didn't come through your understanding. But my Father that is in heaven has revealed this to you. There are some things that you cannot, cannot have revelation of unless God God gives you revelation of it. And the Bible says that Peter had the right answer. Are there anybody, is there anybody in here that gets elated when you have the right answer? Every now and again, I have the right answer. And when my wife, my wife is right all the time, every now and again, when I'm right, you, you see me. I run around the house and I want to tell everybody. I remember we had an argument about German chocolate cake frosting. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Look at everybody in the building and say, yeah. She argued me down. She said, ain't no such thing as German chocolate cake frosting. I said, yes, it is. We went to the lady in Starbucks and asked the lady in Starbucks, do you know what German chocolate cake frosting is? And she did. I said, I see you, brother. You just did what she did. She... <laughs> but then my wife began to expound on it. Does it say German chocolate cake frosting on the box? <laughs> Look at Mother. Mother Kinnears, you clapping, you ain't on my side. <laughs> She's like, this is coconut frosting. I said, no, it ain't. <laughs> I don't want to get y'all to start fighting among yourselves. It's you the church. Nudge your neighbor and say, we the church. Don't be arguing. <laughs> but every now and again, you get the right answer. The right answer is what we need today. And Jesus is that answer for the world that we live in. Glory to God. 
In other words, Jesus, Jesus didn't say he, he, he was going to build the church on Peter because he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But, but, but he said that I'm going to build it upon this truth, upon this foundation of what you just spoke into existence, into time. We're going to build the church on the truth. It's not just going to be on Peter's truth, but it's going to be on every witness's truth. Every man and woman's truth. Everyone who will proclaim and declare that Jesus is the Son of God. Everyone who would proclaim and say that he is the Messiah sent to us. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5, he says, you also. Not your neighbor say, you also. You, you also. Peter ain't just a rock. But you also, as living stones, have been built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices uh, acceptable to God through Jesus. Uh, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens. With the states and all of God's household having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. He's the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the spirit. Amen. Nudge your neighbor and say, I am the church. I am the church. The church isn't this structure. The church isn't this building. But without us in it, it would just be an empty building. But we are the church. We are the living church. We are the organism. We are the body of Christ. God has called some apostles. God has called some prophets. God has called some teachers. Where God has called some evangelists. Where God has called some pastors. For the perfecting of the saints. Touch your neighbor again and say you are the church. You are the church. And we are fellow citizens with the saints of God. Not only the saints that we are seeing right now. But the saints throughout history. Yeah, we, we, we're connected. I heard you, Apostle John. We are connected one to another. Yeah. Glory to God. We are connected. We are the body of Christ. We are that organism. Oh, yeah, the leg bone is connected to my hip bone. My fingers are connected to my hand. and My head is connected to my neck. And if I don't have my neck, that's problems. You might as well touch a neighbor and say, without you, there's problems. I, 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 need, I need you. I, I need you to help me. I need you to help me when, when I'm paining, when I'm aching. I, I need you to have a witness that God is able. I need you to have a witness that God will heal us. I need you to have a witness that God will deliver us. I need you to have a witness that God will do. Exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can even ask or think according to the power that works in us. I need you. I need you. We, we need every part of the body of Christ. We need you as teachers. We need you as pastors. We need you as evangelists. We need you in the body. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. That person right next to you needs you right now. They need you to look them eyeball to eyeball and tell them, I need you to survive. 
I don't need you to amputate now. I don't need you to be cut away from me now. I need you to live alongside of me because I'm going through life. Life is already hard enough. It's hard enough without you. It's hard enough without your hallelujah. It's hard enough without your thank you, Jesus. It's hard enough without your hot glory to God. It's hard enough. But when I come into the house of the Lord and when we come together, when the church assembles itself together and when we come together in one accord, with one accord, the Bible says that when the apostles came together, all of a sudden there came a sound from heaven. Oh, I don't mind it right now. Uh, I, I, I deem you as living stones. And, and, and when we come together into one place, when we come together under the umbrella of God's body, the Bible says that rocks will begin to cry out. He's not talking about no dead rocks, but, but we're talking about these living stones that are collected together to establish the kingdom, to establish God's agenda, to establish God's plan, to establish victory on earth, to establish God's will in my family, in my house. Amongst my children, amongst my friends, God wants to establish his kingdom through you. Touch your neighbor and say, establish, 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 establish his kingdom fitly joined together. If you notice in 1 Peter, that verse I just read you if, you, if you notice, the Bible says that God is involved. Christ is involved. And the Holy Ghost is involved in this wonderful building of his wonderful church. Amen. We cannot deny the work of God. But Jesus is the glue with the Holy Spirit and the will of God being performed in our life and him being the chief cornerstone. Every wall in our life, every uptaking, every building of his church has been established. He is the glue he is the one that will get us from here to glory. He is the one that will satisfy the need of his father. Satisfy the need of his father so that we can be living stones. We are the church. There's too many hungry souls out in the world. We're the church. There's too many people hungry and thirsting. What are you here for? They're crying for a solution to their need and to their problem. We are the church. It's too many widows, too many orphans that don't have parents, that are without. Who's supposed to take care of them? We are the church. There's too many people living under the banner of sin. We're the church. And the church has been called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. The church has been called not to just come into this building, but to take the church to the people. It's, it's a wonderful thing when we talk about light and, and men seeing our good works, 
we're talking about attraction. A lot of times we get it twisted and we say, we say things like, oh, Jesus went to the sinner's house. No, they were attracted to Jesus and invited him to their house. They wanted to be what Jesus was. So you saw him in the crowd crying out, Jesus, my son of David, have mercy on me. They were attracted to Jesus. And so they came out to, in droves. What is our lives saying to someone else today? What is our lives? What is our lives saying to the world today? This was a moment where Jesus took a quiet time to reflect on who do men say that I am. And after they came to the right conclusion, Jesus Jesus said, I'm going to build upon that. Have we stopped building upon the rock? Are we finished with the house in which Jesus is the contractor? He's the one that's written out the blueprint for your life. As long as you live, he's yet working on the building. He's yet working on each and every one of us as individuals. And he's trying to fix the leaks and the cracks in our lives. All the squeaks and the repairs that need to be done in our temple. So that we can be the house of God that he has called for. Not for only this, this building here, but for the world. As I close, I just want the church to stand on its feet. I, just the church. If you are the church, if you are in the body of Christ, just the church, just the church. And I want the church to take some, take, take, take a moment and build an altar right where you are and go ahead nudge that church right next to you and tell them don't bring no wet wood to my fire don't tell them I don't need no wet wood right now I don't need Elijah I need Jesus I need him to speak to me about where to go next, what to do next. I need him to speak to me. Because wherever there is poverty, the church ought to be liberal and full of giving. Where there is weakness, the church ought to be strengthened. Where there is hate, there ought to be more love. In fact, we ought to be trying to outdo one another. That's what the Bible says, Romans chapter 12. Am I right, Sister, Sister Vanessa? Outdo one another in love. The church has been called. Such a dying world. Martin Luther King said this. He said, darkness cannot cast out darkness. Neither can hate cast out hate. The church always has done something opposite 
of what the world, how the world does its business. Love conquers hate. Light conquers darkness. Come on, grab the church's hand next to you. Come on, that church. We're fitly joined together. The Bible's, yeah, we, we're over COVID now. Um, wash your hands when y'all done. Just wash your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go wash your hands. And I want you just to begin to pray. You begin to pray for the church. We're going to pray. Come on, you pray for the church. Just begin to pray for the church that God would cause the church to mature, cause the church to grow, that the church will be unified, unified, oneness, the love of God in the church. Build us up in our most holy faith. Cause us to carry out the will and the plan, the agenda of the Father. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth through us as it is in heaven. God, we value you. We value your kingdom. God, we pray that you will step into time, that your will will step into time and abide in us live through us so that we can change the world so that we can shake up the world that we can shake up this community that we can shake up turn the world upside down in the name of Jesus through your church through your church the foundation in which you set upon your principles your standards your truth have your way Lord have your way in your church have your way in your church. Have your way in your church. God, we thank you for the sure foundation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Built upon, hallelujah, built upon a sure foundation. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his, his righteousness. The blood of Jesus prevail. The blood of Jesus prevail. It bonds us together. Your blood prevails. Your blood make whole. Your blood redeems. Your blood washes. Your blood sanctifies. Your blood bring unity in the body of Christ. God, we command the dry bones to live the dry bones to live every scattered part of the church come together again in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus together 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 oneness oneness in the Holy Ghost oneness in you oneness in you God be revealed in my brother, in my sister. We're sending ourselves a living sacrifice to you, wholly acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. We come to serve you. Serve you, Lord. We come to serve you. Serve our brother and our sister. We come to serve you.
build your church build up from the ground up we upon this rock you'll build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail when we bind and loose we proclaim your God, as we leave today, God, we recommit ourselves to you. That as we leave today, this sure foundation in which we stand upon might go with us everywhere we go. God, use us and speak through us in our neighborhoods amongst friends and family. God, we pray that you will simply have your way. Thank you for opportunities to share your goodness, to share your love, to share the hope that's in us. Now, God, we pray that as we leave this place, but never from your presence. God, we pray that you will bring us back at the appointed hour. Your church, your bride, garnished, adorned in our white, prepared for your coming. We give your name praise. We give your name glory. We give your name honor, both now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, thank God. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and embrace your brother, embrace your sister. Tell them that God loves you, and I do too.